Thanks and um, welcome. As uh, the introduction said, I'm going to talk uh, on a uh, common block cycle tool that AK and I put together with a lot of help from Kurt because we couldn't have done it without Kurt. Uh, but we'll talk about that. And we have, uh, a couple of years ago, we had published a test procedure for kind of the words on how you'd process to get a block cycle test. But it was a little vague on some of the mechanics of getting that point. You just said, hey, you got to find the five to six levels or eight levels for the block cycle, and you need to make sure this and that and the next thing to get there. But it's pretty vague. And as we started looking at it, since ENCODE tools are supposed to be our global standard in GM for fatigue calculations, and given that the, current, the methods we, that were current were somewhat arbitrary, and basically it was, uh, if you want to, limited science to the bin selection, different users could get different results for the same test. So AK and I were fighting with this, and we had some users who, their managers said, I need my engineers to be able to calculate a block cycle test, but um, you guys got to give them a tool to do that. And we're kind of worried about that because we thought people could make the wrong decisions. So we got with Kurt and said, can we um, try to figure out a way to automate this? Because we had some ideas on the way we could proceed with that. For those in the room who may not be familiar with what a block cycle test is, it is a way to simplify the real world down to something a little better than just a simple sine wave. A single sine wave, yes, you can get, a, get it to a calculation that can give you the same fatigue number, but it's not necessarily represented because the difference between the different load levels can be important to the total fatigue life. As we simplified this, or as you create a block cycle, you're simplifying it down to just a number of blocks, three or four or five, maybe as many as eight load levels. And I got a real simple example there. I've got two large cycles. I forgot the number of medium cycles and three small cycles, it looks like. That can be much more realistic. And oftentimes, with, if you take some care in getting there, it can be very realistic for, from, from the point of view of fatigue. You may miss other things in the frequency domain, um, phasing, once you start considering multiple channels, et cetera. But it can be pretty realistic for a single channel from a fatigue perspective. And since we're talking about durability type testing, it, is very, it can also be run very fast usually, so it can be very quickly run many, many samples if you need multiple samples. So our proposal, again, AK and I got with Kurt and came up with this proposal where we said, well, we're gonna obviously have to rain flow count. We're gonna force to a 32 by 32 bin, which is a little bit different than what we've been doing as our standard. We use square bins, range mean bins are square. Use consistent bin sizes because we've got to do some summing in a little bit and keep the residuals open. Then you create your composite rain flow, apply your duty cycle, include the event repeats, close the residuals to capture the overall larger cycle, then you back calculate your scale factor. Strain life approach, we assume strain life throughout this, uh, but we do use stress units for our input, Neuber correction, and the life target was something Kurt needed when he was putting the code together, but typically in the automotive industry, you'll use multiple lives so you can do your reliability analysis once you've got multiple samples. Then we need to calculate the damage histogram from composite rain flow with the scale factor and create the block cycle program. And then write out that block cycle for the result. So, the, if you will, the grand concept that made this work was we took the rain flow histogram, looking down on it, and we said we're going to take our largest range mean pair, or at least the most damaging bin in that range mean pair. Then in the next um, six bins or so, we're going to pick the next one or two highest damaged bins, depending on how close they are together. And the next range of six or seven range levels, we'll pick one or two bins, depending on how close they are together. And then in the other two sections if, that you can see up there, we'd pick um, a range mean pair. So you could potentially get up to seven load levels when you go through this. And the reason this example maybe doesn't illustrate what the, why we're doing the one or two, but a lot of, but while perhaps 90% of the time they look somewhat similar to this, so you end up with one, two, three, four, five load levels. There are cases in the, out there where you get them to either side of the mean, if you will, and you'll have two levels here. So you gotta kinda distinguish between those, otherwise you get a somewhat unrealistic test. But doing this gives us a pretty reasonable representation of the real world or proving ground damage spectrum. 
So with Kurt's help, we had a two a um, a couple of work of uh, flows in our in um, GlyphWorks. Um, there are two workspaces, correct? And then you, ahead of time, you have to set up a duty cycle in an Excel file. We read that in, do the rainflow counting, take that result for the composite rainflow, and feed it through the block cycle generation, and out pops a little report, and you're done. Works pretty good. So just a real quick review, the uh, workspace, you come in with the rain flow, your uh, duty cycle feeds it with a few traps and whatnot to capture it, and that writes out your, um, your rain flow cycle count. You feed that in, and oh, by the way, you can count rain flow count for multiple channels on that previous one, but you have to only process one channel in the second flow. Feed through it, and you put the report, which you can see right off to the lower right corner here. I can't remember if I added that in there, but anyway. Report's a nice little one-page report. It says, I started here, I've got this, summarize it, what my load levels are when I'm done, and I match my damage, et cetera. The advantage of what we've got here is we automated the block cycle test development process because there's science, if you will, behind selecting the levels. It can make that, you know, I don't have, can't, can give it to a somewhat inexperienced user and get the same result I'd get. Uh, it eliminates the guess, guesswork in get, selecting those bin levels and we're in the process of making this our common method across GM and our suppliers. And it's noticeably faster than the previous method.